morning everyone this is Dr. Vaughn and I thought that I would make a, a short video to show an example of an application problem from chapter 11. So we'll start in section 11.1 .1, uh, applications that involve quadratic expressions to start out our discussion in seminar 3. Uh, so this is problem number 120 it's the very last of the application problems in this section it has to do with a square flower bed that gets expanded. There's a picture that goes along with it in problem 119, although the numbers and the units are a little bit different. So uh, this is the statement of the problem. A square flower bed is to be enlarged by adding 4 feet on each side, and the larger square, we know the area of it, is 225 square feet. So we start by defining a variable, and we're going to let x be uh, the length of the side of the original flower bed. This is the question that we want to um, answer. And we can use the expression, uh, by the way, uh, we should include units here, so in uh, feet. Uh, the expression then, x added 4 feet uh, is the length of the side for the larger flower bed. And we can find the area of the flower bed, which is the piece of information that we're given, by just taking the length of the side of the larger flower bed and multiplying it by itself, because the area of a square is the side times itself. So the area of this larger flower bed is the expression x plus 4 times x plus 4 equals 225. Now you notice that uh, when I typed this actual last expression, x plus 4 times x plus 4 equals 225, I didn't go into the equation editor. And that's because the equation editor wouldn't really help me a whole lot in this particular case. There's no exponents, there's no fractions, and there's nothing that uh, going into the equation editor would help in the formatting of this particular mathematical expression. Now, uh, we could have gone into the equation editor without any trouble, and in fact, it's probably a good um, habit to get into to just use it always. I just try to be a little bit more efficient with time when I know that there's no tools in the equation editor that are going to help typeset this a little bit better. However, this changes when we get to the next line, because the next step in this process now is to multiply out these uh, binomials, x plus 4 times x plus 4, using the FOIL rule. So we can say FOIL the left-hand side, you know, using the first outside, inside, last rule for multiplying out binomials um, to get the expression. And now I will go into the equation editor. And we multiply x times x to get x squared. So I'll put x squared. And we're going to get a 4 times x on the outside and a 4 times x on the inside. So when we combine those together, we get an 8x. And the last terms is going to be the 4 times the 4 plus 16. And uh, we're going to set that all equal to the 225 that's on the right-hand side. Okay, so now we have a quadratic expression for x. And uh, now what we want to do is actually solve this quadratic expression for x. Uh, we can use this by factoring. Uh, we can do the square root principle, which is what I'm going to do in this particular case. Uh, we could do uh, subtract the 225 and split this into a product of two other binomials and so forth. Um, so in this case, in this particular case, I'm actually going to go back a step and rewrite this as x plus 4 times x plus 4 equals 225, which is what would happen if you factored the left-hand side. This is a little unusual. Because normally when you're factoring a quadratic, you'd want to get one side equal to zero. In this case, we actually have a perfect square, so I can use that square root principle instead. So let's go back um, you know, um, to rewrite this. As... Insert some parentheses here. X plus 4. You want to take the whole quantity of X plus 4, this whole parentheses. See if I can pick it up here.
uh, squared, and then I'll say equals the 225. So now we can use the square root principle to get these two different solutions, if you will, that x plus 4, the quantity, has to be equal to plus or minus the square root of 225. Take the square root of both sides. So the square root of I like to use cut and paste sometimes. Get rid of that equal sign. Square root of the quantity x plus 4 quantity squared is equal to, I want that not under the radical sign, is equal to, now I'll use the square root of uh, 225. And this simplifies, of course, to just the x plus 4 is equal to the square root of 225, which is 15. Or the x plus 4 equals negative 15. Now, at this point, we don't really know which one of these is, uh, if, if each of these is going to be valid or if each of these is not going to be valid, so I'll just list them both. So we, we uh, solve these separately, and when you subtract 4 from both sides, you get x equals 11 um, or x equals negative 19. Now, uh, we have to discount or throw away the x equals negative 19 solution since it does not make sense in this context. Uh, remember that uh, the x is standing for the length of the side of a flower bed, so you can't have the length of the side of a flower bed being negative 19 feet. So we're left with only the one answer, which is x equals 11, and we conclude that the length of the original flower bed uh, was 11 feet. Now we can actually check our response is that the original flower bed would be 11 by 11, which is 121 square feet, and then we add 4 feet to each side, so 11 plus 4 is equal to 15, and 15 by 15 gives us a 225 square foot larger flower bed. So uh, here is a, a complete response now to the application problem number 120. I've tried to demonstrate how we go about solving this introducing the concept of several different ways that we're going to study in chapter 11 about factoring quadratics and solving quadratic equations. In this particular case, we used the square root principle, taking the square root of both sides. And one very important thing to remember as you think about quadratics is to always um, check the answers that you get to make sure that, first of all, they make sense in the context of application problems, and second of all, that the solution that you get actually satisfies the original problem statement that you're going through. So keep these in mind as we go through different applications of quadratic functions, and I'll talk to you next time.